Tonight only on Fox, just about every year about this time, the subject comes up. People start talking about the Phoenix Lights mystery. 19 years ago this March, thousands of people saw what they believed were UFOs hovering over the valley. But were they really UFOs or just flares? Fox 10's Linda Williams has more. March 13th, 1997, nearly 19 years ago. While thousands of people were outside purposely looking at the sky for a glimpse of the Hale-Bopp comet, they also caught a glimpse of a mile to two mile wide and some very credible reports. Either orbs, giant balls of light that seemed to be attached to something in a mile wide V formation or actual craft. They were called the Phoenix Lights and quickly became one of the largest mass UFO sightings of all time. There were many events starting at 3 p.m. in the afternoon and continuing all the way until 5.30 the next morning. Dr. Lynn Kitai, a Phoenix physician, was one of the first people to witness and record the lights from her home in Paradise Valley. For 19 years, we've tried to defend these incredible videos. She wrote a book about her investigation and produced an award-winning documentary. Kitai says there's almost always something new. Just recently, an analysis was done of the boomerang video. Streaming on YouTube is this video analysis of the so-called boomerang lights seen that night over Southwest Phoenix. People had what they called camcorders back then. An anonymous source called Thinker Thunker says he took this shaky video of the Phoenix lights and used a computerized stabilization technique. And he tries to debunk a U.S. Air Force claim that the Phoenix lights were actually flares dropped by National Guard A-10s on a training mission over the Goldwater Range. So now I'm going to drop in a little graphic so that we can see how far or if the lights move at all in relation to the horizon. The video goes on to play for about a minute and the lights do not move. Five flares stay perfect with one another. That's uncanny. Except for the one that seems to split and go up. They went split into two and went up. Flares can't do that. Flares drift and drop with the wind. They have huge smoke trails that are illuminated by the flare itself and illuminate the area around it. That's what they're used for. This is video of Air Force flares we shot a few years after the sightings. Not one witness to the Phoenix lights or the true unknowns described any of those characteristics. It always pops up every once in a while. Just when you think it's gone, it comes back. The video was shot by Mike Kristen, shot from his backyard in Moon Valley. We talked to Mike in 1997, just days after the sightings. You're convinced these lights were this side of the mountains? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and the reason I say that is because the lights were lower than the mountains. The direction that this occurred in was south, southwest is the direction, which is looking straight ahead. You can see the range back there. 19 years later, Kristen says he's still waiting for a logical explanation. The video that I had, though, it's it's like I say, it's been around the world and many people have seen it. And I thought by now somebody would have an answer to this thing that nobody has come up with anything logical. He doesn't think they're flares, but he's not going to bother arguing his case any longer. People that believe in the flares are not going to believe in anything else. I don't know what they are but I know that they are. Dr. Kitai isn't sure what they are either, even after 19 years of research. Still, she hopes to find out and hopes to keep the discussion going. And it's time we get this topic out in the open. We address it, we accept it, and we study it so we can move forward and not only find out who's driving these things, but also move forward in our own evolution. Linda Williams, Fox 10 News. One of the people I talked to about this was former Governor Five Symington just a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. He was a former Navy guy. He said, what I saw that night was definitely a craft. He said, and wow. not of this world. He's, he's saying, I don't know if it's something we're testing or what, but it was something that he had never, ever encountered before. He followed it. I remember working weekends. I was anchoring weekend show, and we the newsroom got inundated oh, with phone too. calls. Yeah. Just inundated. Insane. We, you know, we're trying to cover this. We don't know what it is, but people are saying it was a spacecraft. It was some, we were visited. Right. It, when we thought everyone was just crazy, but then the more people you talked to, they said, no, I saw yeah. it with my own eyes. As Simonton said, it was not of this world, is how he put it. And that, that was kind of, kind of interesting. Now, for more information about Dr. Kitai's documentary on March 13th, 
We've posted a link with tonight's report on fox10phoenix.com. Plus, a new movie based on the Phoenix Lights debuts in Valley Theater soon. We're going to have a preview of the Phoenix Incident tonight on Fox 10 News at 10 o'clock.